All right, be careful what you say because we are live now. Are we you know, live? We are live. Oh my gosh. I have the microphone up to my mouth so people can oh. actually hear me. Hey. <laughs> it's my first time streaming. <laughs> How is everybody doing? Uh, very excited to be here with you tonight. I, uh, I have to get some things in order here because um, we had a lot of comments to look through. I put in the title of this that you get to pick the topic tonight. You, There's been a lot of I know. suggestions. It's like, I kind of want to do all, all of them. them. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I did find one that really, really hit close to home for me, and uh, and I'll have to bring that up in a minute. But Bef before I do that, I have to make sure you all are aware that Michael Rosenbaum is the best Lex Luthor that's ever been put on film. New guy might be good, but Rosie, he's the man. Have to make sure I tell you that every single week until he comes on here and says something in the <laughs> chat, which he never will. So you're probably going to be hearing this. For a long time. For the rest of our lives. I am very much backed up on chat. Did we get any uh, audio, video, good text oh, from anybody? I do not know. Uh, yeah, Guy Ashby said loud and clear. Okay, thank you. But thank you, Guy oh. Ashby. Now, here's the one. Uh, of course, we are going to entertain a lot of uh, comments from the chat tonight. But this one, this one was definitely something that I can relate to. Uh, it brought back a lot of memories for me because, you know, one of the first things to solving a problem is recognizing that you have a problem. Oh. That's one of the most difficult things in the world to do. Uh, Heather Green, who happens to be a channel member, I, I promise I didn't pick it this way on purpose, but she said, I'm here to announce I have an addiction. My addiction is MTS and it's not getting any better. It's getting worse. Now I'm willing to bet that Heather did not put that comment up as a way to win the contest and get free food tonight. But guess what? You did anyway. So <laughs> uh, thank you for that, Heather. Listen, we've all been through it. We have all experienced that addiction. Uh, before you know it, you can do a lot of things. You, you really do have to keep it under control because if you don't, you could do things like get a house specifically because it has a big garage. It'll accommodate all the kids too, but has a big garage that you can start your breeding operation in and put 127 tanks that you bought off Craigslist and, and drove halfway across the country to get. Spend all of your money, all of your savings, put all of that into it, and then uh, just a few years later end up being completely broke because of it. And then... Oh, yeah, because oh, cause then you wanted to open a fish store, too, along the way. Yeah. Well, you don't, don't say you wanted to because you could have said no. But listen, then... I was along for the ride. <laughs> and it may, was fun. <laughs> you may buy a house in a different state and move so that you can have an entire building that is occupied by nothing but aquariums. And two cats. And, and two cats are in here too. It, it is a serious problem. And you know, I've considered writing the, uh, the, the congressmen and senators from the state of North Carolina to tell them, hey, listen, we got a serious problem here. You know, we've got people that are they're, they're investing all of their life savings. They're, they don't have, they're penniless, just completely penniless because they've used all of their spare funds to accommodate these little bellies that are swimming around in water. It's a real problem. It, it is ravaging this nation. And uh, I think it's time that the government started to take this problem seriously. So Heather, thank you for bringing that to our attention. Um, and you know, making us aware that you know, we really do need to, we need to start letting people know that this is a serious problem and it can ruin lives. <laughs> I wouldn't go so far as saying ruin lives, but. Or. It could definitely uh, bankrupt you. <laughs> it can set you back a few yeah. years. But I will say this, uh, in all seriousness, I, this has to be said, 
and I'm going to say it because of all the people in the chat before the stream started that talked about how I'm always in the doghouse and you always give me the stink eye and I'm always getting talking to after the live streams. No, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> this practice of keeping glass boxes full of water and trying to keep them as clean as possible, which is almost impossible in some cases, it has been the best thing for our lives, for our relationship. Yeah, you know, we've got the kids and they're doing great and everything's wonderful and life is great. Um, but this, I don't even want to call it a hobby because I think that's disrespectful, even though we call it a hobby all the time. This lifestyle, Ooh. hey, you, be, you, you behave yourself back there. This lifestyle has saved lives it's improved quality of lives uh, I know people personally who have said that they they possibly wouldn't even be here today and I don't mean be in the position they're in I mean exist had it not been for this silly thing that that we call a hobby but we should call a lifestyle so uh, all jokes aside this really has been a special thing, and uh, we're fortunate enough to actually call it our livelihood. So, yeah. Um, but, Heather, I feel you. I've considered starting um, possibly like a support group for these type of people. And, uh, you know, we'll see where that goes. I'm trying to secure funding now and, you know, the whole not-for-profit thing and all of that. We'll see how it goes. But if we end up... <laughs> doing it I will let you know <laughs> you're crazy it's your turn now oh geez well I'll end up getting off topic of the topic we're supposed to be talking about that was it we got we got to move on to something else now so oh you're good. so we're talking about a lot of topics well unless you had something you wanted to add to Heather uh oh no I agree Heather Green <laughs> it's definitely an addiction um I wanted to talk about some um uh, shows coming up, some aquatic shows coming up in the next few months. I'm only listing like in order the next few months, just to kind of get get it out there for you all. Uh, primarily, they're in North Carolina. <coughs> Excuse me, except one. But uh, this weekend, March 16th, if you are in the North Carolina area, I know it's a huge state, can take eight hours to get from one side to another, but if you're in the Pittsburgh, North Carolina area, the Aquamania um, Aquatic Show or Expo will be on and uh, kids get in for free. It's only one day, March 16th, and it's gonna be fun. So I just, you know, if you're in the area, go check it out. It should be a lot of fun. It's their first year doing this show. So go show some love. Unfortunately, we can't go. We had some other commitments, so we're not able to make that show. But next month, April 4th through the 7th, is the AGA, the Aquatic, Aquatic Garden Association. And that is April 4th through the 7th, and that is in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, it is not their first year. They uh, were established in 1985, so They've been doing this for a very long time, but that's something that is gonna be a lot of fun and we do plan to go to that one, at least for a day. So we'll go to that one. I can't, you know, mention shows coming up without mentioning Aquashella Dallas in May, and that'll be May 18th through the 19th. And that is always a lot of fun. So we'll be there. So if you're in the Dallas area or you wanna go there, and drive there it's always worth it um, and we'll have our own booth there yeah and then June 1st and 2nd is the Aquatic Expo and that's in Charlotte North Carolina and we went there last year and it was a lot of fun so I recommend all these shows especially if you're already in North Carolina you need something to do this weekend go to Pittsburgh um, I sent some links to Zen, so she's probably putting some of those up now. But uh, go check them out. It's, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. T 
Ted Riggs. Now, Ted, you brought up a really good uh, question. I'm sorry you didn't win the. Uh, you know what? We'll give we'll give Ted some food too. Uh, Heather and Ted, Heather Green and Ted Riggs. You need to. Uh, how's Murtaugh, by the way? You need to email me kgtropicals at gmail.com and uh, we'll get your information and you can tell us what kind of food you want. I got a big old box here full of North Fin food and we will send that uh, off to you tomorrow. Uh, but Ted said, in your Tank Talk podcast, you talked about the time you were breeding African cichlids. I would love to hear more, uh, shoot, I took this off the screen. More stories about that time, like how does Lisa search for mamas in quotes um, i i did say that in the podcast because i said that it was a lot of fun we would get home on mondays yeah. and you would run around and i be listen like, i listen of course i'm tank talk's oh, biggest right. fan I, I listen to you and jason every monday morning so I, it's a lot of fun uh yeah that was fun on mondays actually every single day and i still do it in here but the the females, when they're holding African cichlids, um, th their mouth brooders, uh, when they're holding their mouth gets like really big. And uh, I would just go around and look for big mouth mamas. <laughs> and it was so much fun because I'd keep a count like this one is today. Oh, this one was, you know, from before because even though they're little gray fish, the peacocks are, well, they're not all little, I guess female, peacocks are pretty big actually even though they're all gray you can still sometimes tell them apart and know who the new mama is because the the ones that aren't new the ones that have had the eggs in their mouth for a few weeks you'll if they open their mouth a little bit you'll be able to see the fry and they have little eyeballs and they're swimming and kind of swimming they're bouncing around in there <laughs> in the mouth and it's so adorable so yeah I always had so much fun with that one of the best times of my life. It really was fun. Uh, there is that video. You can't see Lisa doing it, but you can hear her doing it in the background. I am well aware of how weird that sounded, but you know what I'm saying here. Um, the video is actually of my golden retriever. Uh, if you, it, my, uh, She's no longer with us, unfortunately, but um, two, there's two dogs in that video that are both no longer with us. Um, but if you if you just go to our channel, go to the video page and then click search uh, Golden Retriever versus White Top Afra. If you listen to that or watch it and you turn the volume all the way up, you'll hear her in the background saying, oh, there's a red shoulder mama <laughs> and a benga mama. I don't know which ones she says, but um, but she does say it several times in that video. So it's actually a, you know, candid capturing of her actually doing that but that was a lot of fun and, and I can remember vividly having Mondays where for whatever reason I was late and you would text them to me yeah we I got would. a banga mama we got I a know, red shoulder we so got bad. a and a yellow blaze and stuff. it was so much oh, fun yeah. but I would be so sad because I'd be like oh I wish I was there to to yeah. be a part of that I remember waiting forever for the lethernop intermediates to to do that it took them forever yeah they were hard-headed well in the venustas because i was like yeah we never gonna happen we never They're got the babies from them. we never got them from the frontosa or the venustas the frontosas didn't breed until we moved them into the fish store and put them into the 240 and then one of them was holding but oh. it, it never stuck it never did anything but uh but ted was asking like how we did things or or um he wanted to hear more of how we did things. We were egg strippers. We were female strippers. Ha! Huh. That's too funny. Um, oh, we did we it. the little incubators. We yep. had a whole row of little incubators. Yeah, I made, I, I got the design off of YouTube, shocker, and it was a, a very young child. You never see him in the video. You just see his hands. Um, but the, this, he would take this, the tube of a sponge filter the, the up tube of a sponge filter, and then two of the sponge filter caps. Um, certain models, uh, I think like the Gemco ones, uh, the the deep, what was that brand, deep blue? I don't think they're around anymore. I don't know. Um, it had a little cap on the top of the sponge filter that you would hook the tube to and then hook that cap 
to the actual mechanism of the sponge filter. So you take two of those caps, you take some, some pantyhose and some rubber bands, and you put a, one of those caps on either end, and we would put the eggs in there, run air through them by way of an air pump, and, uh, and that's how we would keep the eggs tumbling. And if, there, if some of them weren't fertilized for whatever reason, then we would just take like a turkey baster and get down in there and get the unfertilized egg out. So it didn't ruin, you know, all the other eggs because of the uh, fungus and stuff. Yeah, and it was fun because we had, it was a 33 long, which is a four foot long tank. And we just had them lined up and we would take paint pens and write what it was on the glass uh, in front of those and you just sit there and monitor them uh, we would go through I mean probably probably once a week we would strip females because oh, yeah. when when you have we had 29 tanks of breeders that were that were always breeding and so we would we would just know like we would keep track in our mm -hmm. head oh those sulfur heads have been holding for this long and I don't know. You you become familiar with everything that's going on in these right. tanks, and like she's saying, the females they may all look the same, but when you're around them every single day and you're monitoring what's going on with these fish, you you know which ones are which, and so you're able to look at the one and say uh, that one has been holding a lot longer than the other one. This one's new. That one has been holding them for a while, and so we would go through and and we would um, we would strip them down. And if you're not familiar with what that is, there's a couple of different ways of doing it um, because it sounds barbaric. It sounds like you're, you're hurting the fish. You're absolutely not. What the farms do, uh, they have these massive vats of fish that are in their breeding. So they'll take one of those giant nets, those nets that are like the size of a suitcase. They'll pick up each individual female. And like I've watched Rick Biro do this a thousand times in videos. He does it with one hand, like he, he takes the fish and uses his thumb to open up the mouth mm. and he can see what's in the, the mouth of the female. And then he takes that female and puts her into a bucket of water and just kind of swishes her back mm -hmm. and forth so that it forces water through her gills and it forces her to release them. They, most of the farms don't strip until there's actually free swimming fry in their mouth or uh, I think they call them like heads and tails or heads or tails, heads and yeah, tails. Yeah, because you'll have to take care of them. You have to put them in an incubator yeah. or a, a tumbler and stuff like that. But that's how they do it there. For us, we were breeding on a small scale. So I would, I actually did a video of this. Mm. Um, and I look really young in that video where <laughs> I would actually keep the, the female in the water that she's already in. And I would put the edge of the tum of the egg tumbler in her mouth. Yeah. And I would no, use it. Blah, 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 blah. I'm not taking a drink. I'm showing you like if this is the egg tumbler. I would do this and make her mouth open. The eggs would fall directly into the tumbler. And then I would let go of her. She'd swim off and do her thing, put the cap on it and take it over and uh, put it in the in the incubator bay. There and was it that worked one really time well. that a fry got loose and we didn't know who it belonged to. So there was just one single yeah. fish swimming in there. <laughs> it was so funny. Yeah, we had to replace the little pantyhose on the egg tumblers ever so often. We did switch to cutting up fish nets and using the netting, mm -hmm. uh, which lasted a lot longer than pantyhose. But there was a couple of different things that we used. But yeah, there was one that had a little hole in it. Fish went down through it. And uh, mm. I don't know that we ever really even determined what that fish was, but... It was cute. It was in there. Um, but that's what we did. And it was so much fun. And then when the when the when they were in the tumbler and they were no longer needing to be in the tumbler, which basically means there's no more egg. Um, if you've ever followed the development of mouth brooding fish, most of these uh, egg laying fish, obviously live bears aren't this way, but the, the fish develops on the outside of the egg and then it consumes the egg. So for a while, you'll see a little head sticking out of the egg and a little tail sticking out of the egg. And then that egg will get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And it becomes the belly of the fish. At least that's what I understand. And so after a few weeks from the time of the deed, 
um, they would be free swimming fry in those little egg tumblers. And so each one would go into a 10 gallon tank. If we had two egg tumblers with the same fish and they were smaller broods, like maybe 10 or 12 from each one, we would put both in the, into one 10 gallon tank to grow them to an inch or so in the 10 gallon tank. And then we would move them up to either a 33 long or a 55 gallon to grow out. And yeah, we had to constantly do water changes to get them growing because if you want them to grow fast, you want to feed them a lot. And if you feed them a lot, the water gets messy. So you got to do a lot of water changes. Yeah, we did 50% water changes in all of the tanks every Sunday. And that was a lot of work, but we loved every single minute of it. Well, it was a beautiful thing. I'll never forget when it used to be me just coming in and feeding the fish with you. Then you hurt your back and I learned how to do water changes. <laughs> and it's never stopped. <laughs> I've been doing them ever since. And the kids learned once, how to do them too. Once you realized I knew how to do water changes, you're like, Psh, you're helping. <laughs> <laughs> just like once I unloaded the dishwasher without being asked, now I'm expected to do that all the time. Mm-hmm. She's like, the dishes have been in there for two days. What, what are you doing? They're clean. The dishes are clean. <laughs> oh. I told you I don't mind doing dirty dishes. I just hate putting them away. That is so yeah. backwards from what is common sense. But anyway, so that was our process. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was something that I wish we had not stopped I wish we had just kept it the way it was. Mm. Now, things would have definitely gotten uh, turned yeah. upside down when the guy sold the house and we w- had to move. It was fortunate for us. All of the tanks were already over at the fish store, which yeah, that would know, have been a nightmare, honestly. Yeah, we had to move five kids and well, one of them was going off to boot camp, but it, it was a disaster. Uh, and that would have been even worse if we had to move all the tanks with us. But when I think back to those times, it is the best times I've ever had as a fish keeper. Um, and I've said it more times than, than I can count. It's, I loved it so much. And it was one of those things that you, it's like the Cinderella song. You don't know what you got until it's gone. We loved it, but we didn't really know we were loving it so much until it was no longer a thing. So that brings up the next question. Are we going to do it again? No. (laughs) Eh? I mean, I I shouldn't say no. We don't have any plans of doing that. If I was going to do that again, I would do it very differently than what I have now. Um, We live in Northeast North Carolina. The winters here are not harsh. We did not have one snowflake fall uh, this year, but we get like two weeks out of the year right around christmas where at night the the weather will get below freezing Uh, um it's not that often yeah i mean and maybe not even be this year i don't even think it was two weeks it was maybe just a few days um but that and i learned a lesson from that but go ahead oh with the yeah yeah uh yeah there was one one day where we had a, it was the time everybody experienced it. There was like a huge cold front that came through the whole country and ruined everything for everybody. Um, That was the worst of it for us. What I'm getting at is we don't necessarily, even though we live in the South and it's really hot here in the summer, we don't really live in a climate where we could do outdoor African cichlid breeding. Yeah, we couldn't do that. Um, if we want to breed goldfish, actually, no, because in the summer, they would be too hot. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, there is, and I, don't worry, Lisa Marie, this is not going to be a thing. Don't worry. Unless it was offered up to us for free. But see, listen, we're surrounded by 1,100 acres of farmland. It's spread out. We're immediately uh, surrounded by 75 acres. But the farmer that owns these 75 acres owns 1,100 acres throughout the county. Right behind his house that he lives directly across the street from us, he has four former poultry barns. If you've ever seen poultry barns, 
They are very big buildings. They're not like the size of a football field wide. And so they're skinny, but super long. The buildings are 500 feet long. Oh my gosh. I'm, Five football fields. I wish I had one. If I just had one of those, that would be my cat rescue. I just, well, I was going to say, you I know. would love to take one of those and just transport it on some heavy duty equipment machinery type of stuff I don't and know if bring they make one, one <laughs> over here and I could turn it into a cat rescue. It would take up it one It would go from one end of our property all the way to yeah, the other. Yeah, it would. It'd be it would massive. be so glorious. I don't know if they're 500 feet long or if they're 125 feet long but all four of them combined to be 500 feet. I'm not sure, but they're really, really long buildings and uh, they ain't being used for nothing. There are a lot of farms out here that run poultry barns for Purdue. Um, and that's what he used to do. He had, uh, and I don't know, I guess it was meat chickens. It wasn't eggs. I've never really talked to him about it. I don't think it was eggs. Um, but he these poultry barns are just sitting there like he was making money from uh purdue but then it just got to be too much of a headache they wanted so much done yeah like they, they were asking a lot basically purdue comes in and says okay you have to build this and if you build this we will rent it from you we'll rent the space from you for these chickens and then you have to take care of them and i, I don't know it's a whole big thing uh this is why i'm not a farmer but the old man, and he's 80 years old. He's he was so like, awesome. he was like, it just wasn't worth it. I got tired of listening to them. They made all these demands. I just told them to take their chickens and get out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he didn't, those buildings have just been sitting there. I know. I could really use one. I mean, a whole lot of those burial vaults would fit in there. I'm just saying. Oh, you're talking about for fish. Yeah. Oops. Those buildings are so <laughs> big, we could do both in one building. One on each side of the property. We just got, no, we'd have to go over there. What? Maybe he'll rent them to us. You never know. Oh. You think? I, I bet you I could go over there and I would say, hey, listen, I'm going to give you $100 a month. <laughs> it's better and than what he's getting You now. ain't getting nothing right now. You're paying taxes on it. The, I wouldn't do that. But uh, there might, uh, who knows what is even in there. But it's probably nothing but small lights because that's all they ever really needed. Uh, you know, we could, we could definitely... Uh, you definitely set up some burial vaults in there and and breed African cichlids for real. But I'm I'm not I'm not interested in that. That's too much. Uh, I'm still interested in a cat. Oh, of course you are. There. We're gonna figure that out on here. You don't have to worry about that. So anyway, um, yeah. But again, that was some of the most fun we've ever had, and I I reminisce about those days very fondly. Uh, Kalen Shepard, before the stream started, gifted a membership, oh, yes. and then he said, in the spirit of giving, I gifted a membership. That was very nice of you, Kalen. Appreciate that very much. Melissa Jeswald said, I got my KGT plants and snails today. Yay. Two separate things. The snails didn't come with the plants. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to say it's never happened, but she bought snails and she bought plants. Yes. So excited for this invert slash plant tank. Let me know when you're ready, Melissa. You know what I'm talking about. Uh-oh. <laughs> Melissa getting some special favors. Uh, Odin Aquatics being a rascal tonight on a Thursday night. Uh, how many goldfish can I fit in a 20-gallon tank? 92. I, I don't know how many times I've answered that. 92 as long as they're comets. 92 all day long. Oh, bad advice. And don't do that. <laughs> you can fit zero in a 20-gallon. Uh, now, he might not be... He might not be being a rascal because a lot of people do keep fancy goldfish in 20 gallon tanks but guess what i ain't one of them and i don't support that idea i don't like it i say don't do it so the answer is zero if you're not being a rascal odin if you're being serious uh the answer is zero demars seems to be doing this every week gifted us 20 memberships gifted you 20 Lucky that was people. so sweet. Thank you. Got memberships. How about that? Thank you, Demars. Every week he's been doing this. And we love Super Chats. Super Chats are amazing, but that's a different deal there. Like, yeah. that's that's amazing. Thank you. You get you. to see the, the membership uh, 
the videos that we do extra for Every Sunday. Every single Sunday. Yep. And it's so funny because I'm just whatever. <laughs> She's funny. We filmed videos today and she's just like, I don't like, mean like, eh. but <laughs> no, I'm, I'm talking to you like, like a friend. me, like it's just, we're talking and I'm just being like, I'm giving you my view on it instead of it being something that's like scripted and all that kind of stuff where everything's just a hundred percent factual and all that. I'm giving you my opinion and my views on it. And sometimes I'm just like, you know, which I'm gonna call it, or you know, I just <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. I love it. Liquid Zoo said, I identify as a fish keeper. Well, hey, listen, we don't judge, okay? Nope. You identify whatever you want to identify as, just let us know what you'd like us to call you. <laughs> but I, I too also d identify as a fish keeper and a dog keeper and a cat keeper reluctantly oh my and gosh the cats we've had so many new ones this week it's crazy it, i wake up, up i wake up at like four o'clock every morning to go pee and then i lay there trying to go back to sleep and i'm thinking about okay what am i gonna do with these cats and how am i gonna do this and then i'm like go to sleep you can't do anything at four <laughs> in the morning <laughs> uh. Victor Claudio said, I have a new addiction, listening to the Tank Talk podcast. Oh, that's awesome. That is very special. I'm sorry. We only have a few episodes out there for you. Uh, we are close, You're Jason and I. You're number five, though. Yeah, but we're, we're close to the 2,000 subscriber mark over there. Getting close to the 500 mark here. I don't think it's ever going to happen. It's one of those things that's eluded us forever. Uh we're getting close over here. Anybody that's watching this now, if you're not subscribed, what are you doing? Come on. For whatever reason, we lose subscribers in every live stream and it really hurts my feelings. So uh, mm -hmm. hopefully that doesn't happen tonight. And it would be really cool in mm -hmm. the next, should be in the next couple of weeks, uh, we should hit that 500,000 mark. Um, are we gonna do anything big and special? Uh, no, not really. We're gonna be really really happy and very excited i don't but. even know if i can be happy at this point i've wanted it to happen for what a year and a half two years and it's like finally <laughs> i mean our our channel was growing like wildfire for a few years and then it kind of died off and it I, i'm not complaining because we still have the best job in the world but the growth slowed down anybody else seeing the pleco uh chasing around the oscar that's interesting that is so funny um i bet Ooh. he ain't gonna win that fight uh, but they're fighting i wonder if there's eggs over there or something oh oh this is, i can start my uh commentary career here since i'll be doing that in august uh so which one is joey and which one is rod <laughs> Now the yeah. other Oscars getting mad at I You well, know what, those Oscars, they sometimes lay eggs and they breed. So I bet you the Playco went over there and was messing around. And But I don't know which, I didn't think the red Oscar was involved. I thought it was the tiger and the albino. Well, it's just mad because it's not involved. Maybe that's it. He didn't get him any. And uh, Jeez. yeah, he's, he's left out of the whole thing. But, um, and I don't even remember what I was talking about. So, oh, yeah. uh, Oh, yeah. I mean, our, our channel was I don't mean to complain that our channel hasn't isn't growing as fast as it used to. It just isn't. I mean, a lot of it has to do with we tried a bunch of new things that didn't really work. And 2023 was a really rough year. And, you know, our the growth slowed down dramatically. And so when we thought we were going to be at 500,000 two years ago, it's uh, taken a lot longer than that. So it and will be nice the kind of people that buy our subscribers so we take a little longer oh, sometimes stop it nobody bought subscribers knock it off <laughs> i said it and i mean it okay so anyways on a fun <laughs> note i got this really cool book and i had wanted to show it on my live stream for roots and whiskers but i didn't stream last sunday because it's a long story but um yeah i got this book from vincent dunn and it's super cute. And if you're not somebody who likes to read, there's some really cute kitty pictures. 
And it's adorable. And it's all about. If you're um, somebody that likes to read, there's some really cute kitty pictures. I said if you don't like oh, to read. I'm sorry. I didn't listen. Look. Oh, cute. <laughs> but yeah. Anyway. That, uh, who was that from? That was Vincent from. Vincent Dunn. That's right. Vincent I just Dunn. think that's so sweet because I love books so much. And to get a kitty book. And it, it's just so sweet. I love it. That is very cool. Uh, Luke Cochran, otherwise known as Luke Combs, gifted five memberships. Thank you so much for that uh, and loved your rendition of Fast Car, by the way. Uh, Leo 209 Aquat Aquatics debating if doing a Lake Tanganyikan uh, tank, but in between doing... Sh All right, hold on a second, Leo. Debating if doing a Lake Tanganyikan tank, but in between doing Shelley's or Rock Dwellers. Benefits of both fish are the best. Wait, did I cut this off here? Uh, P.S. African fish are the best. Yeah, sorry. I, I got to make this larger so I can actually see it. Um, Shelly's are fish that we have not kept. That is not something I, that... I want to because they're so cute. I really want Shelly's. I, I agree. think I might get a tank for those one day. It's one of those that we have always talked about wanting to have and just never have. Uh, Jason has one of the coolest Shelly tanks. I love the concept of just putting all the big shells in there and letting them do their thing. Mm -hmm. I think it's adorable. I and the too. fish are so teeny and they're cute. Uh, I love it. I, I love the idea of it. Um, I, I don't know as far as benefits. Uh, the benefits that you would get are the same as you would get uh, for anything else. You would get the reward of providing them with what they need to not just survive, but to thrive. And you get the, the good feeling that you'll have from that. That's that's what we get in all of this. So uh, that's what you could expect. And the other benefit is you walk up to it every day and you go, oh, look how cute they are because they're so teeny and, and adorable. There you go. That's the other, that's the other one. <laughs> um, Jennifer Anderson, best friends with Nicholas Holt, by the way. Yeah, uh, after her. She's so awesome. A whirlwind tour of the southeast, the plants and snails landed today in pristine condition, FYI. Wow. That's uh, two in a row that that's happened with her. And one of them was in the dead oh of gosh, winter. Yeah. But where she lives, that's not as big of a concern. But, uh, but yeah, that's, um, that's good to hear. I'm glad. Uh, we have switched to UPS for the overwhelming majority of our plant orders, even though we make less money because, well, it, I shouldn't say it that way. It costs us more money um, because uh, it costs more than the Postal Service. But if I can spend 50 cents more and it get to you two or three days sooner, I'm going to do it. But yeah. some places, uh, the Postal Service is, they say two days and UPS says five days. So, you know, I can't, I can't do that. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's good to hear. And Jennifer, I know where you live. It should not have know, to be that so hard crazy. to get stuff. I don't understand it. It should be so fast. I had to call my doctor's office last week because I was supposed to have something sent to me like three weeks ago. And I just wanted to know if it was stuck in the mail because it's like, um, hello. <laughs> and if you and call the postal service, they're like, I don't know. That's yeah. their response. I don't know. What does the tracking say? The tracking says it's in Bermuda. Well, then it's in Bermuda. <laughs> okay. Thanks for your help. <laughs> I, I mean, I hate it. I, I hate because we rely on them so much, but uh, we don't rely on them nearly as much. And the very sad thing about it is I don't think they're going to care. You know, we we ship a lot of packages every week. It's it's ridiculous how many packages we ship every week. And our postmaster treats us like the most important people in the world. He really does. He's a he's, good guy. He comes to our house to deliver stuff sometimes. Yeah, he's, he's awesome. I, I cannot say enough good things about him. And, you know, I've gone to him. We've gotten to know him, and I've gone to him, and I've been like, are they going to care? If I say, hey, I'm taking my business to UPS, is that going to get them to straighten up? And he's like, 
I wish I could tell you that it would, but mm. I, you know, I mean, it, it means a lot to him, but everything above him. And once it leaves our area that he is responsible for, it's no longer his, you know, there's been a lot of shady stuff going on in Richmond though. Like there's people that have been arrested because of things being stolen like I believe it. gift cards and stuff. It's multiple people there. So it's it's really a shame. Yep, I totally believe it. Uh, going to a wedding in Orlando and St. Augustine. To, they're, they're getting married in two different places. Uh, any shops I should shop at. Isn't that one place? What's that one place called? Top, is it Top top Shelf? Duh. I don't know. Florida's Sean Hale place. is a really good friend with somebody there that uh, is a really, really big store in the Orlando area. Um, I wish I could help you out. I live in North Carolina, so I don't really know. And when we get down there to Florida, which we've been every year since 2020 or whenever, um, it, it's we don't get the chance to go to fish stores. I know. There. When did we go to a fish store? Was it Orlando? No, it's been Chicago. Dallas and Dallas the one time the fish gallery yeah that was for an event very but nice that one store in Chicago was really nice I liked it was that Chicago where we went there and Lefty was there and no that was, yeah that was a different Chicago one though that was because that Mike, was not Chicago Mike from fish tank barn drove us and we had Jason and Joanna. But that wasn't Chicago. No, that was Chicago because that's the first one he ever went to because he drove from Michigan. Connecticut to... Connecticut? He doesn't Lefty. Like oh. oh. Get with it. Uh, <laughs> and that was the first time he ever drove there from Connecticut to Chicago, I remember. Because that's where we met him was at Fish Store. Right. For the first time, met him there. Uh, Sean Russell gift, gifted five memberships. Wow, so many memberships being gifted out today. Thank you so much for that. Yes, uh, thank you. My R Doc. I remember trying to say that right, and I don't think I did, but uh, became a member. Welcome to the team, Victor Claudio. I feel like I haven't placed an order in a while, so here's some love. I need me some more extreme and tropica plants. Hey, listen. Haven't talked about it yet because I, I don't want to talk about my business all the time. Uh, but we did get a nice Tropica order today. Uh, a lot of tissue cultures and um, and quite a few pots too. So we are very, very well stocked um, with plants. So yeah, get them. And uh, this is the time of year to get them too because they're coming in big. They're coming in really lush. And uh, we don't have to worry as much about the weather um, and weather, we don't usually have to worry about ever unless there's shipping delays. And, uh, or it's the holidays. This winter, there were some delays. <laughs> uh, Malawi Cichlids RVA asked, what's best fish farm to visit in Florida? I have seen so much video footage of Florida Exotic. Um, and Rick Biro is a good friend of mine. His brother is a good friend of mine. I cannot wait to get down there, um, and uh, and I will get down there. Rick is going to be a guest on the Tank Talk podcast when we're in Dallas at Aquashella. Um, if I if I was to choose, I would go there only because we've been to Old World Exotics, yeah, we and went that there. was that amazing. Was I loved it. One of the best. The only problem that I had with going there was we were there like on my sister and brother-in-law's time. Uh, it was a trip that they took us on for my birthday. Uh, we went down to the Florida Keys and stayed at the resort where they filmed the show Bloodline at. And so when we were driving from Miami airport down to the Keys, we stopped in Homestead, we went in there. And so I wasn't able to really just like take my time and soak it all in. I kind of felt like I was in a hurry, even though my sister was like, hey, do your thing. I know this is fantasy land for you. Don't worry about us. And they walked around with us and they enjoyed themselves too. I wish I could have had all day there. That would have been amazing. Um, the only problem, I don't remember who you said that was that asked that. 
these are not farms that are just walk up and say yeah, hi and they're and not open to through. the public they're not at all opened up to the public they they're working operations they have a lot of work to do and so it is hard to get on these farms uh i know the people so it makes it a little easier for me but even even if we wanted to go i couldn't just hit up rick and say hey we're in town we're gonna stop by he might be okay with that, but more than likely he'd be like, dude, what do you, I, I got to pack 27 boxes of fish. I, I ain't got time for you, you know? So these are, these are working operations that, um, you know, they're not kept in show quality condition there because there's work going on in there. And so they're not always uh, open to guests. I'm just, I'm just being honest with you. And I wouldn't be either if I was them. So I can't blame them. Um, so, you, you know, just be aware of that. And don't be insulted if you email them and they don't respond. It's not that they're being jerks. It's just, you know, these are small operations. They're, they're big operations, but there's only a few people working these operations. And so they're, you know, they only have so many hours in the day. But those are the two that I would put... Um, above anything else now imperial tropicals where did he say he said he was going to southern florida because imperial is in uh they're near the tampa area i believe um they might be op more open to it i'm not sure i've never been there either but i i would love to go there um yeah i, I hope that helps i probably didn't uh vincent gifted 20 memberships wow that, that's wow. like 100 vincent gifted memberships this tonight got me the book nice <laughs> that is awesome Thank i mean you. as if you haven't done enough vincent good grief uh sean again said lisa i love you and john oh he said your name first oh thank you <laughs> i want as many folks to find you guys as possible you keep this hobby fun and i don't even have a tank yet wow so you're one of those people that are doing research first that's awesome and that's a name that we've seen in here for a while so that man is doing some research jack let me tell you something you're doing it right. Sean, when are you going to do it? I mean, come on. There's only so much preparation you can do. Get get yourself together. Go get you a tank, even if it's a small one. Start it up and uh, start having some fun with it. That car is driving. Oh, they passed. Very hmm. slow. Uh, Finsanity, USPS is trash. All caps. He said that so loud. If I send my neighbor a letter, it goes to a different city 45 minutes away to get processed there is two huge post office 10 and 20 minutes away legit no joke i i know uh there is there's a customer that ordered from us that might be in the chat right now that uh lives in the same county as us yeah it's tim russell he said i don't trust my mail lady i should have just met y'all at food line to pick up my order <laughs> i know i mean if that wouldn't be weird we would do that but i told uh, him i said i I wasn't trying to be weird, but I looked it up in your nine minutes from us. <laughs> we, it's not stalking. His address is on the order. And I know. <laughs> but I just had to see, like, how far it was. But, yeah, the Postal Service, you know, it's a government-run operation. What, what else are you going to say? <laughs> you know, they do, they do some dumb things. Um, they are the cheapest guy in town. Um, and so... You know, and where we live, they deliver Amazon. They do. I mean, I don't remember the last time we got a package from Amazon that was delivered by UPS, not fish stuff. Don't start with me. I am anti Amazon for fish stuff, but oh, we but order other, other stuff, stuff from yeah. there. Um, I just ordered a bit for grinding up tree roots. I mean, you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. We live in a rural area. I can't just go to the store and buy one of these unless I want to drive two hours. I just ordered 23 and me from Amazon because I couldn't find it at Walmart or Target. And or we drove CBS or Walgreens. We Nobody drove 45 minutes to I even Walmart. Went to KG, or King George. I was going to say, I even went to KG Tropicals. <laughs> I went to King George and it wasn't even there when I was in King George. I was like, Ugh. so I ordered it from Amazon. What's the farthest you've ever shipped? Uh, we did do, when we first had our site in like 2013, I shipped a couple times to Hawaii 
uh, a couple times to Alaska to the same customer, uh, but multiple times. Uh, okay, hold on. One of the customers was in Hawaii and another customer in Amazon. They didn't live in the Amazon, lived in <laughs> Alaska. <laughs> and I shipped to both of those customers multiple times. Now, now that we're on the same page, um, <laughs> that was a nightmare, not to get to them on time. They got there on time, but we were shipping big boxes of fish, big fish, big weight. It was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And uh, we made the decision then that it was not, we can't do this anymore. Yeah. Um, when So when we started the website back up again in 2020, um, I cut off Alaska and Hawaii day one because I hate to do it, but it's just, if something costs, you know, $12 to ship to California, it costs $36 to ship it to Hawaii. I mean, and I understand why, but I'm just saying, you know, I can't run a business that way. Somebody orders from me, you know, a $20 order and they pay $7.99 for shipping and then I got to pay $36 to ship that to them. Like, come on, I'd go out of business really fast. I hate that that's a thing, but, uh, you know, unfortunately it's reality. And then there was also Puerto Rico uh, was the same way. It was just, it was too much. And uh, I, we had to, we had to get away from that. Can you do a video about koi fish? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there will be one coming up because I will be doing a video probably... I don't know, probably a month or so from now. Uh, and I don't know, it's possible that Micah might come down and do the video with me. Uh, Micah, the guy that built my pond, he messaged a couple weeks ago and he was saying, you know, I'd love to come down and, and you know, do something with you. And I was like, well, how about uh, my first spring cleaning of the pond? And he was like, yeah, that sounds good. So <laughs> um, I'm sure he's really looking forward to that, but so he might come down, but other, either way, um, I'm going to be doing a, uh, I'm going to be doing a video on that, whether Micah is with me or not. And in there, I will talk about how we did unfortunately lose one of the koi, uh, oh, not a single goldfish, but I understand they're related, but you know what I'm saying? All of the comet or common goldfish, whatever they are, they're thriving. They're so dark red like not red but orange they're oh, beautiful yeah. Very. um and the koi the three koi that we have left are amazing but i really um, do so three or four three there's one goldfish that looks like a koi oh. and micah thought he was a koi but he's not he's just a really fancy goldfish oh. um what i would absolutely love to do but it's like number 12 on the list of things to do uh, in priority um I'd lo I want to build that above ground pond. I really want to build one that is a square kind of halfway in ground and the rest above ground DIY on the cheap, but doesn't look cheap. Uh, I've already got all the, all of the logistics worked out and even had Tanner Serpa say he would love to come down and help with that. Of course that was last year. I don't know if he'd still be willing to do that. Um, but I really want to do that. And if I do that, the sole purpose of doing that will be for all of the goldfish that we have and then add a few more koi. And a buddy of mine, good friend of mine, just bought a very well-established, very successful koi business here in North Carolina. And, uh, and he was like, dude, I know where you can go to get the koi when you add more koi to your pond. So there will be plenty of koi videos to come. We can't do one. I, I well, I can't add more koi now because that that pond is pretty heavily stocked. Yes. <laughs> the the three koi that we have are giant. Um, but once we get those goldfish out, there's 24, and there might even be more now because there was some babies when we first got it um but i know for a fact there's 24 goldfish in there everything from this big all the way up to you know a good eight nine inches long some big ones in there 
Um, all I'd love to take all of those out, put them in the new DIY pond, and then uh, add some koi. And then there were like a whole lot of little babies too. Those were the little minnows, yeah. Oh, but I thought there was baby goldfish too. There, there was some. I, I don't know if they made it through the winter though. Oh. I don't well, know. I think you guys, you want to hear a funny story? So I have a stock tank outside of the fish house with my goldfish in it that have, it's my five feeder fish. Well, they were feeder fish. I got them from Petco like, what, like four years ago? And they've grown. They're like this big Has now. it been four years? Yeah. Yeah. But I bought them when I went in there. I was like, I just want five feeder goldfish to give them a life and let them live. And the lady that worked there was like, oh, that's so sweet of you to do that. And I'm like, yeah, I just want to help five of them out. Just give me five because I can't pick and choose whose life should be more valuable. So she picked out five for me, took them home, stuck them in a the stock tank. When we moved here, well, no, they went into the 125 for a little while. But then when we moved here, I ended up putting them in the stock tank outside and I stuck some um, ram's horn snails out there with them. And uh, that stock tank did freeze over a couple of times when we had some really cold. Not completely. It was like this much, the top, it froze, just a layer, a thin layer of ice. And uh, we have the water thing going, the CJ pump. Um, what do you call that thing? What's the proper name for it? I don't remember. Anyways, it just, it kept the water <laughs> moving, so everything was good. But uh, It's a CJ Eco Pond, I believe it's called. Yeah, it's really cool, though. So I went out there probably like two weeks ago thinking, I'm not going to find the ram's horn snails. Uh, the goldfish are good because they'll come up and swim around. I know they're fine. Jeez. Those ram's horn snails are huge. They did not die. So I believe that when we ship ram's horn snails, we shouldn't have to use heat packs because they can live in <laughs> they, frozen <laughs> conditions. <laughs> they can freeze and, and be fine. I couldn't even believe that. Somebody asked for an update on the uh, Fowler tank. There you oh. go. The lights are off on it right now. There's the, uh, oh. the fox face right there, and there's one of the wrasses. There's the angel. Yeah, that's not much of an update, but uh, I will be doing a video on that. I have a, it's nine o'clock. I'm gonna tell y'all what, I'm gonna try something that I think will be a lot of fun. Is there a slow down sign in front of our driveway? You know what it is? 875,000 people are watching this live right now and it's like a big thing and people are driving by to see what all the hubbub is about. Uh, I bet you that's what it is. Well, it's because it's all lit up. But you know, oh my gosh, I actually saw that that dog was out there running around again today. Won't uh, let you get anywhere near it though. It just takes off running. Uh, I was petting it yesterday, but anyway, um, I am going to do some videos in the very near future. One of them's already been filmed and I'm working on another one right now. And <clears throat> there's also one for Lisa's tank, which guess what? It is full of water and running as we speak. It is a fully functional tank. It is running. I'm so excited. There's no fish in it yet, but it is, it's going. I don't know why there's no fish in it yet, but. Cause I'm um, not ready to put the fish in it yet. It has to cycle. I have been obsessed lately with a certain type of video. I'm not going to talk about what it is because a lot of people steal ideas on YouTube, but uh, there's a certain type of video that I have, am absolutely obsessed over and I'm going to try something similar uh, with these videos that, that I'm working on. These will be videos that will be like bonus videos each week, not our, you know, our Sunday videos will be like normal, but these will be bonus videos, um, probably upload on Saturdays. And um, you will get an update on the, the saltwater tank in one of those videos. 
and watch it bomb because nobody watches any saltwater videos on my channel. I understand. It's, it's understandable. Um, but there's going to be very close up, very intimate uh, updates on all of our major tanks that we have in the fish house here. Uh, this one, but all three 240s, the new 300, mm. your 125s. There's going to be a lot of videos. Oh my gosh, I am so mad about my 125, my Planet Aquarium. I moved some quarry cats from my other 125 and I stuck them in the planted 125 and they made it all everywhere. So yeah, I'm a little upset about that. I had to do two water changes, one yesterday and one today. And uh, water looks a little cloudy, but it yeah, looks good. It makes good. me mad because I don't want the substrate messed with. I didn't realize they were going to be that aggressive with it. Their little butts might get taken out because I want that to stay under the plants to fertilize my plants. So, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Wait a minute. Did I? Oh, I know what I did here. Let me let me go to this, go to this, and then. Okay, Craig Detman became a member. Welcome to the team. Fishstachio, haven't seen that name in a while. Hey, John and Lisa, you're the best. Thank you both for being you. Well, thank you for coming back. Maybe you've been here and I just haven't seen you. But uh, but yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Don and Sharon Frelick became members. So many new members this week. Good grief. So much fun. Uh, John Russo. John, do you still have Scott the betta fish? Oh, that's a sad story. No, unfortunately, mm -hmm. I do not. Uh, geez. He passed before we moved here. Yeah. Yeah, I had him on my desk for quite some time. He was awesome. Um, at, but, you know, he was already King, older when King we got him. betas don't live as long as right. regular size non-king betas i guess that's the best way to put it or giant betas yeah you can call them kings whatever you want to call them i thought you only called me a king but anyway uh anyways <laughs> uh tim russell asks, oh i do have one question about an item and i ordered does the fritzheim 7 bacteria have to be refrigerated no no but you don't want to freeze it and you certainly don't want it to get too overly hot but yeah, no it does not have to be ours. uh I've actually had a situation where I, I don't know what the circumstances were, but we shipped a bottle to somebody and it froze. I think it sat out on their porch. But anyway, um, and once that stuff freezes, it's it's over. There's no coming back from that. So uh, but you do not have to refrigerate it. Refrigerating it will not hurt it. Refrigerating it will not hurt it. I guess I said that right. Uh, but it's not necessary. We don't refrigerate it here, if that makes you feel any better. Uh, Leslie Perry, my husband fed my pond goldfish today. He said they were swimming around and looked hungry. Aw, they think probably it's, were. <laughs> I think it's too early in the season. Should I worry? No, mine are eaten. Uh, I don't know where you live, Leslie Perry, but... Jeez. Is it uh, Tennessee? I, we don't need to tell these people's business. Jeez. I didn't say what road she lived on. Want to put up a map Jeez. of all of our... <laughs> I didn't say you live this many minutes away from us like I did Tim Russell. Um, my koi started eating and my goldfish started eating like I, like a week and a half ago. I fed, I tried feeding them two weeks ago. They weren't interested. Um, but like a, a week and a half ago, they... Uh, they started eating, so I've been feeding them every other day. Yeah, I've and been feeding my goldfish like every two or three days. They're not aggressively going after it. Um, normally, when I feed them, um, the koi are super slow, and they just go, boop, boop. They do what koi do, and it's so cute. Um, but the goldfish are usually like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. they're not doing that yet. It'll be another few weeks, I'm sure, before they do, but... Uh, if, if they ate the food, I, you don't have anything to worry about. If your husband threw it in and they didn't eat it, one feeding, you're probably okay. But if he starts doing that every day and nobody's eating the food, then we know what can happen. So 
Don't worry about it yet. Uh, QC Aquaholic said, I keep ram's horn snails and I tote on my windowsill. You know what? Ram's horn snails, cherry shrimp. There's just so many things that you can keep without, you know, them being in a heated tank or filtered or anything like that. Like, I have two little vase bowl type thingies with cherry shrimp on my windowsill. And I know that they're probably a little chilly, but... I just stick some moss with covered with algae on it, stick it in there, and they just kind of do their thing. I don't even really feed them. Like maybe once a week I'll throw a little food in there for them, but I think they'd be fine without it because they're just eating all the other stuff. Might not be the same if you live in Minnesota or Michigan or something like that, but uh, down here we can get away with that. Sean said because he's being a rascal, how often do you guys bathe your fish and what kind of soap do you use? Oh, I, now, I use Fritz Complete when I bathe my fish. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I'm a Old Spice guy, um, but not with my fish. <laughs> he put that in the chat before the stream too and I saw it and I thought about using that as the, uh, as oh, the, the winning one. Sorry, Sean, to... Uh, to spill the beans there but uh but no that's adorable uh we feed them 24 hours a day they are the cleanest fish you've ever seen because they are always in the bath uh <laughs> leslie perry would like an update on roxy the beagle um roxy's doing good uh she's it's crazy because that dog has been through four surgeries in the last okay my daughter left for college in the summer of 2020. And that was the year she was diagnosed with cancer and had to have- The, the dog, not the daughter. Yeah, and she, uh, Roxy had to have her biggest surgery. Like it was so, like we were so worried about her. And uh, she ended up having to have another surgery almost four months after that. And I was like, oh my gosh, am I gonna have to do this with her all the time? Because I don't want her going through these surgeries. That is no way for her to live so that I can keep her around forever. And uh, so she ended up doing okay because I was taking her in every month to be checked because I didn't really know what I was looking for on a dog. And uh, so they were like, she's fine. You know, we can do it every three months instead of every month. But then right before we moved here, it was, it was like two or three weeks before we moved here, they said that <clears throat> they found another one on her. So they, another lump, and they wanted to take it out and they were gonna test it. And so they did. Thankfully, they were able to get her scheduled really quick because they knew we were moving. Um, we went through Eagle's Nest, my favorite, by far my favorite um, uh, veterinarian in the world, Dr. Judge. And she, she did the surgery. She said she should be fine. They tested it and everything. And it wasn't, uh, I think that one was benign, thankfully. Uh, but brought her down here and I took her to get I took her back because one of her stitches had not uh, dissolved and I was really worried because I thought it was going to get infected and so they um, they took care of that took it out checked her she was fine and it was probably last year early last year when I found or Kenzie found the other one and took her in they tested her they did everything <clears throat> and it was cancer on top of her having cushings now she has cushings but uh they did the surgery they took it out and she actually healed super quick with that surgery it was like it never even happened uh, yeah so now she has to be on medication every single day for her cushings and she gets tested um she's at every six months now it was every two weeks, then every four weeks, then every six weeks, I'd have to take her in to be tested for an entire day. And she'd come home so miserable, like, I just wanna be home. So she goes back in, 
March, May, to get her next test. Uh, but the doctor had said her, I forget what it's called, but was elevated a little bit the last time, but I didn't have to, to up the medication if I didn't want to, if she wasn't showing any symptoms. He would rather just keep it at the level or the dose it was at. So I did, I kept her at that dose because I didn't want to over medicate her if, if she needed it when she really needed it. So she's, long story long, uh, <laughs> she's doing good considering her situation. But thank you for asking, Leslie. Hi, to, hi to Skeeter. She's actually doing extremely well. You would not even know. I mean, yeah. she's a 10 year old dog now. 11 11 she, and she has been drinking a lot more water again recently but, but i'm just it, thinking it, positive it's i mean she's she's doing extremely well um craig detman you talked about smaller community fish but how about african cichlids from the big box stores uh i have one small local fish store so I am not one of those people that's going to tell you don't buy fish from Petco or PetSmart. I, I'm not that guy. Uh, I'm in the industry. I know where they get these fish. Um, they are from the same places that a lot of fish stores get their fish. Uh, so are you going to have a problem if you're buying African cichlids from Petco or PetSmart? No. Um, typically what you're going to find at those stores is the mixed imbunas and pretty well juiced peacocks um and i don't like that part of it uh you know it, when you go into petco or PetSmart, particularly PetSmart, i think does this and it, it's not them doing it it's wherever they're buying them from if you see the little two inch peacocks and they're screaming with color don't buy them because they're doing things with hormones and the foods mm -hmm. and all of that kind of stuff. You're going to buy the fish and you're going to be like, Oh my God, I got a steal. I only paid $16 for this screaming with color male. And then two weeks later, it's going to be a gray fish. It that's what happens. Uh, so, you know, I would avoid that, but the Imbunas and stuff like that. I mean, every time I go in there, you see, yellow labs and they're in a tank with Kenya and zebras and buying fish from there it's not a big deal i mean i i wouldn't tell somebody not to get those i would just quarantine though for sure but that's with any fish because i've had issues and i'm so thankful i quarantined i do think that you're you're going to get a better product if you order your african cichlids from a live fish direct or an imperial tropicals dan i don't think dan dan sells many africans but um there's a lot of very reputable online retailers that i i would much rather see you buy even in bunas whatever you can pick and choose what it is that you want whereas at petco you're going to have one tank that's going to be a mixed you know unsexed get specific things pay a couple more dollars and get them from these reputable retailers that are getting them direct from farms in Florida and stuff like that. I mean, I, for us, when we had our store, the major shipments of African cichlids that we got were from Florida exotic fish sales. You're not going to find a better source in the United States than those fish. PetSmart and Petco ain't getting them from there. They're getting them from overseas big farms just like all the tetras and all the betas and everything that you're going to get from those stores so you know it, it is what it is does that mean they're bad no but i would take a fish from florida exotic over well really anywhere else and that's not because they're my friends i've felt that way since before i knew them i mean and that's look no further than my yellow labs the peacock and hap tank that is behind Lisa here does not have a single fish from them in it. And that is a travesty. I um, know. I want to get in touch with Rick and see if we can get some for you. I want to I want to figure out something to do. I want to get all the females out of there 
I know that's mean. I don't want to kill him, but I want to get him out of there. You. Maybe I know. that's what I should do. I should start a female peacock in the hap tank. All female in hap female. All female peacock in hap. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. It'll be a. a it'll be an African cichlid sorority. <laughs> that's that's cute. African sorority. No, that's adorable. Yeah, because I, I would love to get some big ha I've got some big haps, the the Morii, the Fusco, the Borlei, all of which just swam by. I don't know if you can see them behind Lisa's head. Um, I got a big head. They can't see them. No, it's not that. But um, yeah, we, we got to talk to Rick and, and maybe go down there. I We've been talking about it forever that we'd like to go down there to that farm. Uh, and just, I'd like to go down there and spend like two days, just buy a, a GoPro that we can put in the water and just do the whole thing. I would love that so much. And even to just not even do any videos, just to be there, I would absolutely love to be there and then, uh, and then bring a bunch of fish home. But that's a long drive. I don't even know how long of a drive that would be because I really don't want to fly anymore. I want to avoid that at all costs, but, um, let me see here. I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, from home. That is a... Come on, 5G. 13 hour and 49 minute drive. Might have to try to mix that in with the Daytona trip this year. But I would absolutely love to do that. Uh, and, and maybe I'll work that out with them where I'll go down a couple days early go to to Rick and Tamala's place and then come up to Daytona and meet you. Are you talking to me? Yep. It's on video. You y'all heard me tell her. I'm answering to Marcel. Yeah, you heard me tell her. So it's fact it's documented now. So she can't be mad at me when uh when I tell her what the plan is. Oh what are you doing? I, was I heard something about Florida. I should go down there since I'll be driving anyway because I'll be taking all the stuff down for the booth. Right. And, uh, and I, I go there a couple days early. and Wait, uh, without me? Yeah. But I haven't gone. I know. I'll tell you how it is. I'll, mm. I'll, I'll no, you go this time. I'll fly down and go myself another time. Uh, that's fine. You, and you can. I'll always be the one that a, went first. Oh. <laughs> or you can just drive down with me and we'll I go can't together. I do that. I have too many responsibilities. Yeah. Um, that is the kind of place. like, And I, and I know Rick well enough where I feel like he would just be like, hey, go do your thing. I mean, I'm not going to be pulling out fish and, and doing all that, but just be able to just walk around kind of on my own without the awkwardness and stuff like that, which it'd be perfectly fine to walk around with Rick or with his wife, Tamla. They're both amazing people. Um, just to be able to just freely walk around a place like that would be like walking around heaven for me. I mean, it, it would be amazing. Um, that would be so awesome. I'm going to have a nice long talk with him in a uh, couple of months in da in Dallas. So we'll have to uh, see what he thinks about working something like that out. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. But that'll be fun. Uh, I think I missed something here. Got 12 minutes left. Has anybody commented about you staring at their phone yet? Oh, I don't know. I'm just answering people. <laughs> I haven't seen any. Uh, so, um, Tim Russell wants to start an African cichlid tank. He's thinking about it, but he doesn't uh, know how to properly stock it. So, he was thinking about getting some from Mark. But, you know, I think Mark would help him out figuring, him out, figuring out you know which one should go together it's not that hard you just want to make sure you have the right amount of males so the best way to do it and you can do this through mark i mean he he will definitely help you out um the best way to do it to have the least amount of headaches uh we're going to talk about that that in this week's uh, video that's coming up on Sunday. As a matter of fact, we talk specifically about peacocks in the members video. So all the 548 people that are watching this that got free memberships tonight, make sure you check that out on Sunday. 
the easiest and least heartache inducing peacock and hap tanks are going to be those that are all males mm. that is either a go cheap and see what happens kind of thing or you can spend big money um my vote would be to spend big money i ain't got big money to spend but you know if you if you had to do it and you want to do it the absolute best way spend big money and here's what i mean if you go it doesn't matter where you go if you go to an imperial tropicals or a live fish direct which i highly recommend both of those websites they're both absolutely amazing um if you're gonna buy males I mean, some of the HAP males, you're going to spend they 80... Get, and they get huge, yeah. so you can't have a small tank. You need to have a larger Well, tank. yeah, I'm assuming he's already figured that part out. But, I mean, a, a large Redfin Borlei, which there's two of them sitting right behind Lisa right now. One of them is right above her right ear. Um, that's like an $80 fish if they're the size mine are. Um, but if you buy them five inches and they're males, you're going to probably spend 40 and a half to $50 per fish. This is why I say it's expensive. If you're going to put, you know, 16 fish in a 200 gallon tank, um, which that doesn't sound like many in a 200 gallon, but with haps, they get really big and 16 is actually a lot. Um, it'll take them a while to, to really fill it out, but you know, you're going to be spending $800 on fish if you're buying, I don't know if that's the right math, but that's a lot of money. But how much did you spend on the tank? How much did you spend on the filtration? How much did you spend on the light? And that's what, that's what blows my mind about this hobby. I should do a video all about this is that you hear these people talk about, and I'm not saying you, Tim, I'm just saying so many people will be like, yeah, I got this 150 gallon tank and then i bought these three kessel lights and i got the two fx6s and i'm ready to buy my african cichlids but i don't want to buy males because they're 50 dollars a piece it's like but dude you spent 3700 dollars on your tank you're afraid to spend a few hundred dollars on fish it's <laughs> preposterous i say i laugh because of my tank oh <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of the opposite of what I'm talking about. Y'all will know very soon what uh, what fish she's putting in that tank. Um, but yeah, it, it's completely the opposite of what I'm just talking about. But but that's the thing. It's like it's like buying a Ferrari and getting a V6. You know what I mean? What? Which you can't do that. Or or a Mustang or, and, a, and getting it in a V6. Okay, I'm not making fun of anybody that we know, but. Like putting your oldest son? A, putting a oh. lift in a truck that is Two-wheel drive. Yeah, sorry. I can't say it. I'm just going to shut up. But the same person <laughs> we can make fun of for having a muscle car with a rubber band engine in it. It's a Mustang with rally stripes, and it's a stick shift, and it's a little V6. It's a beautiful car. <laughs> you know, you need to spend the money on what makes the most sense and if you're going to spend not you tim but anybody spend five grand on a on an aquarium you're going to get something like this 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 aquarium is seven to eight thousand dollars with all of the stuff and then you're going to be like i don't want to spend fifty dollars per fish come on are you crazy you know that's where you should be spending the most money is on the fish uh, you know forget about you know, the $1,600 lights, Kessel lights are the best in the world, and they are really expensive. Get you some lesser expensive lights, spend the money on fish. You will be so much happier if you do it that way. Uh, what about all the trucks around here with half a lift kit? Oh, oh don't even God. get me started the on ones that, that nonsense. Do this. That's what he's talking about. Oh, they drive me crazy. The ones that drive down our road that are like, I'm like, stop. You sound stupid. There's one particular truck. It's a it's a white Ugh. Silverado. It's a nice truck, but you can hear it from eight miles away. And I'm like, Jeff Foxworthy has done jokes about this guy. Like, it, it, oh, it just pisses me off every time I uh, 
I, every time he drives by, I just, it drives me nuts. But anyway. I, I just, I, I'm so annoyed by those noises that go by sometimes. I know some people really like that and they think they're cool, but it the scares my cats, people. It scares my cats. The squatted <laughs> trucks are unacceptable. And I'm saying it right now. There's 344,000 people watching this live right now. If you <laughs> drive a squatted truck, you're embarrassing yourself. Stop. It's true. People are laughing at you. You just don't know it. I don't I care I am. <laughs> who you are. I don't care where you're from. I don't care what your ethnicity is. You're being laughed at if you're driving a truck that's the ass is rubbing on the ground. <laughs> Nobody likes that except for you and the four other people that have done that to their trucks. Now there's more than four, unfortunately. <laughs> when we, when we <sighs> bought this house and I was driving back and forth every weekend from Virginia, there was a, a Silverado. <laughs> 3G said they're overcompensating for something. <laughs> yeah. There was a, a, it was either a Silverado or a Suburban. No, it was a Silverado. Um, yeah. Why did, why did I say Suburban? Silverado that was for sale that was squatted oh, right on the side the, of the road and it was right before you got to the North Carolina line yes it was in Virginia but it was like a half a mile from the North Carolina line and it was sitting there for months <laughs> and I was like had don't get, nobody want that cartoon looking stupid thing <laughs> it probably got towed to the dump busted suspension and come on what do you you want me to buy that and make myself look like an idiot no <laughs> <sighs> Imposter B said, love you guys. I learned so much from your videos. Thank you for all you do. Much love to you guys. Well, thank you. Thank you, yeah. I'm glad we could help. That's very, very cool of you to, to send along a super chat. Melinda Miller also became a member. <laughs> this, with all the gifted members tonight and all of that, this has to be a new record. Yeah, that is so cool. It has to be a new record. Thank you to all uh, new members who have signed on tonight and those who were gifted memberships. Thank you to the gift givers and the recipients. Make sure you check out the bonus videos uh, every single Sunday, the way I've been doing it. And uh, sometimes I forget, and I'm sorry, but I like to put those in the end screen so that if you're watching the public video, I put them in the end screen of the public video. So you watch the main video on the main channel. They're both on the same channel, but you know what I mean. <laughs> And you get to the end of that one, the, it'll be right there for you. If you're a channel member, you click on that and you go right to the bonus footage for that video. It's great. It's a, I'm such a genius for that. I uh, make it as easy as possible. But if you don't want to do that, just go to the channel, go to the member section and you'll see all of those, all of the people that are on here tonight that got those gifted memberships, check out those videos. If you like our list videos, you'll really like those because it's, it's just more of it. And uh, we get a lot of really good feedback. Not a ton of people are watching them, which, you know, that's fine. You, you're, you're a channel member. It's up to you whether you watch them or not. But uh, those that do seem to be sending off uh, very positive feedback on those. We do them a little bit differently. We, uh, we, we don't do them scripted. We just talk with you like you're our friends. Yeah. And it's a lot of fun. And I run yeah. my mouth a lot, just like I'm doing right now. He does. Fistachio said, hey, John, I got a new Breaking Benjamin tattoo. Wow. I have a, a routine that I do when I write the scripts for our videos. I, I don't know why, but I go, I, I open up my Apple Music and I listen to the Breaking Benjamin Essentials. And I've listened to it so many times that I can practically tell you the order in which the songs play. However... I'm not threatening you with this knife. I'm just sitting here playing with it. I'm going to say something that some people are probably going to either love. Others might make fun of me for it. And if you want to make fun of me for it, I don't really care. Uh, yeah. My taste in music is very eclectic. I listen to a lot. Some of it gives me a headache. Well, in this band that I'm about to talk about uh, gives her a headache. Um, I am on a... I prevail kick. I, I've always liked them. I've always thought they were good, but for some reason they just, they just hit me. And I'll tell you why it was their drummer. Their new drummer is a YouTuber 
And for some reason, I fall down rabbit holes sometimes watching drummer YouTube videos. And I love watching the videos where you have the drummers and they do like a, a whole daily vlog when they're on tour. I don't know why, but I can watch that stuff for hours. And the drummer for I Prevail is, is one of those guys. And he's a very successful YouTuber. I think he's, he's about to hit a million subscribers. And, and I was just watching a bunch of his videos and I was like, Oh my God, he's, he's the drummer for I prevail. I love those guys. And so I've been on a huge kick with them ever since. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they're one of the, I, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it to your face and I'm going to say it to everybody else, even though you're not a fan, their version of blank space is better than Taylor Swift. I just, I said it. No, I did hear that one. And I remember saying, you're right. It is. It's way better than Taylor Swift's version, but. Anyway, Henry Rothschild, Rothschild, thank you. $20 uh, super chat. Good grief. Thank you for that. Coming in last minute. Appreciate it very, very much. <laughs> Matt said, I always thought of John as a Swifty. Guess I can be surprised. <laughs> I mean, you know, they do a, uh, Who was a Taylor it Swift that song. Bob messaged you about coming to Creed. Creed. Yeah. Yeah, I got a message from Steenfot, uh asking if I have ever seen Creed, but I was like, no, but I'd love to, and I'll <laughs> say it to your face, and uh, I might be outing Bob here as a closeted Creed fan, but you know what? He's the same age as me, and you know, we were at our prime in the 90s. Now, I so, think Bob's younger than you, John. It's Jason who's the same age as you. Bob is very close in age to me. I Closer think Bob than is you think. younger than me. And I'm way younger than you. By a few years. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, but it is. 50s, not 40s. I am not in my 50s. So knock it Do off, lady. Do you know lady. what year this is? <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. We're just going to have to get off of here because I'm humiliated now. <laughs> what was I saying? At oh. least you're not going to the doghouse. It's true. <laughs> um, but I told... Bob was like, yeah, I might go in Seattle or wherever. Or he actually said something about California. And I said, no, it'll be cheaper. Fly to North yeah, Carolina because they're going to be in Raleigh and we'll all go together. And he was like, oh. Maybe. I think it was Virginia Beach, not Raleigh. It was Virginia Beach. You're right. Um, Creed is another one of those bands that I, I don't care what anybody says. I love Creed. Yeah. Scott Stapp is a maniac. I don't care. So many of these bands, their singers are maniacs. Uh, Appetite for Destruction is one of the best record albums that's ever been made in the history of music. Axl Rose is a nut job. Ugh. I don't care. Yeah. He can't sing worth a damn either, but I love their music. Mm. Anyway. Let's go back to the 70s. That's my music. I was on a Kansas kick for quite a while. You, you were not a fan. I didn't say I wasn't a fan. I just wasn't into them like that. That's all. Donnie Baker, I'll say it to your face. That's where I got that from, Hayden. That's why I say that. State law. I don't say the state law part, but that I'll say it to your face. I love that. That's hilarious to me. White Zombie. We're going to be talking music now. I, I love this. No, this is I my did, favorite part. I did go to a White Zombie concert. And I did too. concert back in 95, I think. Yeah, it was a little loud. Oof, loud. I saw White Zombie and Glenn Danzig opened up for them, believe it or not. Um, he came out. They opened with the song Mother. He came out, said the words Mother, and then went in the audience and never got back up on the stage. Wow. He was in the audience the entire time. It was hilarious. And he never got to me because I was way up in the back. But, but that was pretty neat. I, I thought that was cool. Boston, you want to talk about some of the best... Ooh. Music that's ever been made. Good old Tom Scholes and Brad Delp. Mm. Dylan, yes. Dylan Edwards just said, Lisa looks like a Fleetwood Mac kind of girl. Are you kidding me? That's my favorite <laughs> band. That's my favorite band. Fleetwood Mac, oh my gosh, is my favorite. Tell them I, what I did for you last year. Even had to, I had no, to step no, through the vomit I, and all that. Just tell them. Oh, well, yeah. I, he got me Stevie Nicks tickets and we went there in Raleigh and that was so much fun. I had a great time because I love Stevie Nicks, but 
when let's see, I went to Fleetwood Mac. Um, was it twenty? 19 because it was right before it was again i bought those tickets for her for it her was birthday in 2019 because brayden was only like a month old and, and it was before mcphee died too wasn't it oh heck yeah she died last year yeah duh so it was so cool to see them all in concert before she passed away and if you're friends with discus hans on facebook he has his avatar for facebook is i think it's like this or whatever but it's mac it's Mick Fleetwood, and um, I took the picture in concert, and I sent it to, to Hans, and I was like, this looks like you. It's crazy. So he uses it as his avatar on Facebook now. But anyways, uh, yeah, I love Fleetwood Mac. I like Steve Miller band. I love Credence Clearwater. I like the Eagles. I like, um, oh, my gosh, all of them. Jackson Brown. <laughs> I just really like the 70s. I feel like I should have been born you early were. 60s oh. and have Whoa, been a no. teenager in the 70s. I wish I could have been a teenager in the 70s. Whew. Some of the best music that's ever been made. And, yeah. and for me, so Tom many Petty. people. I love Tom Petty. So many people go to the Rolling Stones, ACDC, Led Zeppelin. I'm just going to be brutally honest with all of you here. There's 78,000 people still watching. I'm not a fan of any of those three bands. I'm sorry. I, I mean, I'm not saying that they're bad. I'm just saying I don't understand what all the fuss is about. I don't understand what the Jimi Hendrix fuss is all about. I've got a bobblehead of Jimi Hendrix. I, I'm a fan, but I don't understand why so many people go absolutely nuts for him or for Led Zeppelin or, dare I say, even the Beatles. I mean, yeah, they've got some great songs, but people talk about the Beatles like they're the... What? I... I but then again, Elvis, I, I'm a humongous fan of. I, I like a lot of weird stuff. I mean, Elvis isn't weird, but uh, I don't like Led Zeppelin, but I love Elvis. Somebody said, uh, oh, it was Tim Russell. Uh, where did we go here? I lost it. I hate YouTube's system. It's so bad. Take it back. We don't need to get, um, we don't want to get banned. They know their system's bad. Oh, Jimi Hendrix is definitely overrated. Jimi Hendrix was a great musician, but I don't know why everybody talks about him like he's the best that's ever been. Uh, Tim Russell said something about Morgan Wallen, um, Luke Combs, and uh, some others. Luke Combs is the best one doing it right now. I don't care what anybody says as far as country music goes. Uh, Morgan Wallen, mm -hmm. I'm a fan of. And he, he said Wailing Jennings. Sure. Um, but uh, but yeah, Luke, Luke Combs is there's nobody doing it better than him right now as far as current day country music. Yeah, he's he's the best at it. Uh, Disturbed is coming here with Breaking Benjamin. See those videos that I was watching that got me on the I Prevail kick. The first one what I was watching, uh, it was vlogs that were done by the drum tech for the drummer of Disturbed. No, no. No. Hold on now. It was totally a clickbait thing. <laughs> the the guy said the the title was uh drum tech for the disturbed tour. But what he didn't say was that he was the drum tech for the opening band for disturbed. Uh but that's what got me watching and I was fascinated. His videos are great. Um, but he made it seem like he was the drum tech for Disturbed, and he's not. Um, in the titles, he made it seem like that. That's what got me to the drummer that is the drummer for I Prevail, and then I went on this long I Prevail kick, oh. and uh, that's, yeah. She's not a fan. When I play I Prevail, when we're playing darts, she likes Brian. She doesn't like Eric. If you know I Prevail, you've got the clean singer and the dirty singer. Uh, he's, I guess, I think that's what they call themselves. There's the screamer and then the singer. She doesn't like the screamer, but yeah. I do. I think he's really, really good. I think uh, he's got a really good screaming voice. Mr. Skippity Doodah said, did Lisa have 90s hair, Aquanet, rattled bangs? John had frosted Z Sriracha jeans. I know it. Okay, I was kidding. Please don't ban me. <laughs> I, yeah, I had aquanet hair. I had big 
bangs and my hair was teased and I used, uh, let me see, what was that stuff? Sun in on my hair to make it, I tried to make it blonde, but it was always orange. Oh, oh the, the things I did to my hair in like the 90s was, or 80s, late 80s, early 90s was insane. I'm so glad that all changed because <laughs> that was the ugliest stuff in the world. That's why I wish I was a teenager in the 70s with just the long straight hair parted down the middle. It was just so much better. I don't know what happened to people in the 80s. Like, and then there was the uh, leg warmers and the, uh, what do you call that, parachute pants. Oh, yeah. And the... Uh, the jean jackets no the other the michael oh, jackson oh, jackets when you roll your you roll up your pants at the bottom you had to tuck it this way and roll it up <laughs> and then you had to have two different color socks on and like oh it was so stupid <laughs> this is what i love here because look look at the diversity of music here we've got lincoln park from latardo latardo I'm a huge Linkin Park fan. Then we go to Iron Maiden. If you're not an Iron Maiden fan, you can go F yourself. Uh, then we get down to Joe Walsh. Huge Joe Walsh fan. Huge Eagles fan. So, of course, I love Joe Walsh. REO Speedwagon, Blink-182, Nine Inch Nails. I mean, come on. Blink-182, forget about it. I'm a huge fan. I'm a fan of all of these. Fleetwood Mac, Steve Miller, Boston, Deep Purple, Dio. Who doesn't love Ronnie James Dio? Come on. All five foot six of him. That's that's a man right there. Uh, Blink-182 is trash. How dare you, Fistachio? How dare you? How dare you? I like Blink-182, and I'll say it to your face. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Yes. Yes. Love Tom Petty so much. He helped me through a lot of anxiety trips because I hate driving long distances so i'll just stick tom petty on and just everything's good henry rothschild said i was at woodstock which one probably the because first one. there's really only one real woodstock the one in the 90s i love watching video footage on youtube of that show particularly corn's performance there and kid rock i love it i love that even green day there uh, I think I think that was the third Woodstock where Green Day performed and everybody threw all the mud on the stage. That was hilarious. Oh. Uh, I love Green Day before they lost their minds. I mean, yeah. I don't like Green Day. Love Zeppelin. Love Led Zeppelin. I just don't get it. I'm sorry. I, I like mean, some of them. Some of their songs are good, but I can't listen to like I can't listen to more than like three songs in a row of them because it just gets to be too kind of repetitive i guess i i i'm not saying led zeppelin is bad i've been to the when robert plant and jimmy page toured just the two of them and they went and did all of the led zeppelin songs my buddy called me one day it was like a thursday and he was like hey i got tickets to go see led zeppelin do you want to go and you're not going to say no of course you're going to go so i went and it was a great concert but i'm just not like Everybody talks about them like they're the best thing ever. I mean, yeah, I love cashmere, I, I, but I I just, I don't know. I, I, they're not the best thing in the world, but I say the same thing about the Beatles. But Ted Riggs comes in with Def Leppard. Forget about it. Oh, That's one you, of my absolute what did, favorites. What did you get for Christmas? She got me. This was a total, total shock. <laughs> the entire set of Def Leppard Funko Pops. It's and amazing. the one was even missing his arm. It was so cute. And the only thing disappointing about it, it's a it's a beautiful thing. It's modern day Def Leppard. So Vivian Clark is with him. He's great. I've seen them in concert twice with him. I wish there was also a Stephen Clark one. He has passed. He's no longer with us. He died 25 years ago, if not more than that. But we need to show some love to Stephen Clark. I, I think that there should be a, uh, a, a fun coat of him but yeah that was a cool thing I love that fun coat and I love that he's only got one arm it's it's adorable but I mean it's sad that he only really has one arm but it's cute that the Funko pop was done that way so 
But yeah. Papa Roach, Cheap Trick, Royal Blood, Cleo, no, Cleopatric. Eyes not doing so good tonight. Uh, not familiar with Royal Blood or Cleopatric, but I love Papa Roach. Insane uh, clown posse. <laughs> <laughs> the Doors. Yes, I like the Doors. I like them, but again, like people are like, Jim Morrison was a genius. And I, listen, I think people say Jim Morrison is a genius for the same reason they say Janis Joplin is a genius and Jimi Hendrix and Kurt Cobain because they're dead and because they died at 27 years old. These were very talented musicians. Jimi Hendrix would be the best out of that bunch. But to Saint Kurt Cobain, the way people have, and mm. like the day he died, people were like, oh my God, we lost a saint. Come on, get out of here. He was a miserable human being that wrote miserable songs, but they sold a lot of records and produced one of the best musicians on earth right now, Dave Grohl. Other than that, I did not like Kurt Cobain at all. No disrespect. I mean, he did well, pass I mean, and he's got a family and that's sad. But uh, but if you didn't like him before they died, you shouldn't all of a sudden love them after they died. You know? Well, and they were extremely popular when he died. They were at their prime when he died. But they got more popular after he died. It's just a fact. It just is what it is. And that sucks. Everybody I just mentioned, the whole 27 Club got more famous after they died. And yeah. I'm a big Leonard Skinner fan. Same thing. They were very popular. They got more popular when half the band died in a plane crash. I you mean, know who didn't seem like they got more popular after they died? Michael Jackson. Because well, he you was can't, so popular you can't get before. more popular I than know. <laughs> I it's mean, like... Elvis, okay. the same thing. I mean, you can't be more famous than they were. It's not possible. Yeah. Dire Straits, love them. Smashing Pumpkins, love Smashing Pumpkins. Even though we're talking about one of the most unique voices to ever do it. I still absolutely love, uh, I love his voice. I, I would love to sit down and have a conversation with Billy Corgan. It is... Seems like an absolutely fascinating human being. I want to go to a Joan Jett concert. I they love were with Joan Jett. Sh they. She was with Def Leppard mm -hmm. and Motley Crue at Nats Park when we lived in Virginia. I remember hearing about that. I would have loved to have gone to see her. That's that's the funny thing about it. You would be uh, you'd be going to that just to see Joan Jett when you've got two, she's an icon too, but two of the biggest to ever do it. I've seen Def Leppard like six times. I would have gone for Def Leppard too. Are you kidding me? I Def Leppard's Def, really I good Def live. Def Leppard. Joe Elliott doesn't have the voice that he had in 1984, but uh, what's the 27 club? There is a, there is a, 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 just type it in on Google. There's a whole list of musicians, um, Kurt Cobain, Jim Morrison, Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin. I think, um, what's her name? The rehab girl. Why am I drawing a blank? Oh, Alice. Uh, Amy Winehouse. Oh, Amy Winehouse. Yeah. Uh, there's a whole bunch of people. I think Shannon Hoon. Like, there's a whole bunch of musicians that died at 27 years old. And, uh, and they call them the 27 Club. And every single one of them got more popular when they died. And mm. it's... It's unfortunate. I mean, it, they're, they were very talented, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Steely Dan. <laughs> That's funny. John is underrating Janice, but Kurt Cobain isn't the same category as Joplin. Come on now. I mean, Janice Joplin had one reasonably good song. Let's be honest with each other here. Worst voice that's ever recorded music from a female. There's a lot of males that have horrible voices, but. Uh, I kind of like her voice. It's different. I'm not a fan. She was a drug addict and miserable. Uh, come on. That doesn't mean that she didn't have a good voice. Oh, uh, her voice sounded like she was a miserable drug addict. Not a fan. It's 9:49. <laughs> I hope uh, I hope Ed isn't streaming tonight. Rat in a Cage was that song. I Rat I love Smashing cage. Pumpkins. Oh, yeah, I don't Smashing care what anybody pumpkins. says. I I absolutely love them. Uh, there's a video I've watched like 25 times. 
of Billy Corgan. He's in somewhere. I don't know where he's at. And he's at a restaurant and he just goes outside the restaurant and pulls out his guitar and he just starts singing. And like, of course, a crowd assembles around him and it's just like completely impromptu thing. And I'm like, wow, that would be amazing to be there and just happen to run into Billy Corgan. There's another one fascinating video that I've watched. There's a channel that I love out of Florida. Uh, it's called Adam the Woo. He's a daily vlogger. He's been daily vlogging for like eight years and he vlogs every day. He did a vlog where he went somewhere. Uh, I, I don't know. He was touring the country and he went to this place because there's a, a, a particular courthouse where there's what's called the hanging tree outside of it. And it was where they would execute people back in the day. Oh. And so there's like a lot of history behind this tree. And he goes there for that to tell the story of that tree and, and all of this. While he's there, he goes into a restaurant and wouldn't you know it, Billy Corgan's in there. Billy Corgan was also touring the United States in an RV and he went to the same place to do a video about the same tree. And so they ended up doing a video together and Billy Corgan bought his lunch and everything. And I'm just like, I would love to meet up with Billy Corgan randomly at a restaurant somewhere and have a corned beef sandwich with him and talk about the nineties and how great they were. And it, it, that's a great video. If you can, if you can track that down somehow, I don't know if you type in, it, it's on the Daily Woo channel, I think, and just type in Hanging Tree or just type in Billy Corgan. Maybe it would pop up. He doesn't sing in it at all. He's, they just sit there and chat, and it's amazing. I love that. Anyway. Well, when we went to see Stevie Nicks, she had an opener that I really, really liked, and I ended up following her. And I remember doing a picture, I took a picture and I posted it on Instagram on my story and I tagged her in it. Her name was Nicole Atkins and she's just awesome. She has a, she has such a good voice. I love her music. I even listen to it now on my uh, Spotify. I'm gonna call it Shopify. On my Spotify music, but she's awesome. If you wanna check her out, Nicole Atkins. Um, but I thought it was really cool that she opened for Stevie Nicks and she's gone to like other, um, like she's opened for her several times, but the coolest thing is she messaged me back and we chatted, I don't know, probably three or four times, just different random times. And she's just a really awesome lady. So anyways, when we got home from that show, I searched her on YouTube and I saw an interview of her on the Conan O'Brien show. Yeah, she's awesome. And I'm like, if she's been on Conan, how have I never heard of her? Uh, Fistachio said, how do you like Sleep Token? Isn't that the one QC Aquatics? Yes. Or QC Aqua. Oh my gosh. Aqua. I was going to ask Aqua. you who it was. Aquaholics. QC Aqua, he was in here tonight. That's I, why I, I, I was reluctant I to. I just couldn't remember what the last part is, Aquaholics or Aquatics, but it's QC. I was reluctant <laughs> to bring it up because I did not remember his name and I feel bad about that. But when we were at the Aquatic Expo in Charlotte last year, I was talking with a gentleman there who has a YouTube channel who apparently was in here tonight. And he said, have you heard of this band Sleep Token? Nope, never heard of them before ever in my life. And he said, they're masked. They're completely anonymous. And he said, the drummer is the equivalent drummer to Danny Carey. And I said, hey, wait a minute. Nah. Who do you think you're talking to here? You kidding me? Don't you dare say something so bold. And he was like, I'm telling you, listen to them. They're really good. It's a very unique type of music. Sometimes they'll be like kind of like R&B and then sometimes they'll be scream metal and speed. And, uh, just listen to them. We listened to them on the way home. Yes, we did. The very first song I listened to was The Summoning, which is their most popular song by a mile. And I was instantaneously hooked on that band. I love them. I love Sleep Token so much. And apparently they're identities have been leaked 
some asshole leaked their identities. And I'm going to tell you something. Whoever you are that did that, you are a scumbag. And I hope they sue you. Because why not let these guys do their gimmick, let them do their thing, and be anonymous, and be able to live normal lives? How dare you take that away from them? But I love Sleep Token so much. They are... They've gotten me through a lot of three and a half mile walks that I've done around my neighborhood. They're amazing. <laughs> That's how I feel about Sleep Token. Well, from what I understand, uh, Ed is streaming tonight. So we should get off because that's rude. Yeah, that is very rude of us. And I apologize uh, for stepping on Ed's toes like that. But you know what? I wish I could do a live stream that's just music talk. I would love that oh gosh, so much. Not another podcast. No, I will not be doing uh, that. Uh, okay. But anyway, so that I stop talking, uh, I will hand it off to Lisa so that she can say goodbye to everybody. Okay. <clears throat> All right, everybody, I'm going to put you out of your misery. <laughs> and if Zen, if you wouldn't mind sharing uh, Ed's stream, that would be amazing. So if you guys want to go like check out fish stuff and not hear music stuff, uh, Ed is streaming and you can get a little bit more fish talk and uh, yeah but thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight and uh, chatting in the live stream it was a lot of fun John's not done well there was two super chats that I missed Sean oh. came in and said slap sh was the star of GNR I'm pretty sure that was meant to say uh, slash and yes you're right and his last name is Hudson in real life Saul Hudson is his name um, and then Jonathan Clemente just got my plants. Y'all, thank you. They look great. Oh, awesome. I'm so glad they worked. They got to you and you love them. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So now I have to start all over. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, again, thank you for being here and thank you for all of the super chats, all of the, um, gifted members memberships. That's amazing. Everybody is so wonderful. I really, we really appreciate that. And just thank you everybody for being here and having, I don't know. I think it's been a fun stream. And thank you, Mods. You guys are the best. You're the best on YouTube. <laughs> but we'll see you next Thursday. Bye.